So we are going to be talking about the WIAC West African Senior Secondary Certificate Examination General Mathematics Exam Paper. Okay, and we are talking about first the examination scheme. What modality is this exam going to take? There are going to be two papers, and paper one and paper two is what they are termed. Okay, so the first paper is going to take a total of one hour thirty minutes. You are going to be pre presented with. 50 objective questions. There are multiple choice questions and they are going to take 50 marks. While the second paper, paper two, is going to take two and a half hours, okay? That's two hours, 30 minutes. And you are going to have two further divisions on that paper two. The first one is going to be mandatory. You are requested to attempt all the five questions in the first section, that's section A. That section A is going to carry 40 marks. And then in, in option B, you are going to have eight questions and they are going to be tougher, but you are to um, attempt five questions out of these eight and they are going to carry a total of 60 marks. So now, what are the topics that are featured in this particular exam? And that is where we are going to be talking about our detailed syllabus. Now, the very first topic that WIAC is noting for us is the number and numeration. And here, we are going to be talking about the number base in which you can convert from one base to another, say from base 2 or base 3 to base 10, and back to base 2 from base 10, okay? We are going to be talking about modular arithmetic, and I think this is an aspect that so many students, they are not familiar with, but it's it's quite easy. We also have links to um, this particular topic in our videos. You can check that out by clicking on, on the link that is being flashed on top of the video. We also have fractions, decimals, and approximations. You've been doing this since your um, primary school, but you can also take it for that. Why is still including it? And then, oh, one of the favorite topics I love so much from mathematics, indices and logarithm. The applications of the laws of indices, the application from the laws of logarithm, we are going to be using that to solve some of our questions. And then, sequence and series, in which you have patterns of repetition maybe just in addition of numbers or in multiplication or division addition we amount to arithmetic progression multiplication or division we amount to geometric progression we are supposed to know that now to calculate the hand term the sum of the first n terms in both cases and then sets okay we are going to be talking about the finite and infinite sets subsets we are talking to be talking about complement of a set union of sets intersection of sets and it's also a very wonderful topic. Logical reasoning is something that is now being featured in the exam also, in which you want to look at the validity of true and false statements. Okay? Numbers, we'll be talking about natural numbers, integers, irrational numbers, and you need to understand what each of these means so that you can appropriately work with them. Sorts is another aspect that WIAC is focusing on, and we need to know the format of how do we operate with sword, how do we find conjugate of a sword, how do we add, how do we multiply swords. Now, matrices and determinants, we want to know the addition and subtraction and scalar multiplication of matrices. We want to know how to find the determinant of a matrix, okay? Then we we'll talk about ratio, proportions, and rates, how they relate to real life, how we can use this in some financial accounting, just in line with percentages also. You can talk about simple interest, appreciation, depreciation, compound interest. Okay, then this also is also leading us to financial arithmetic. You can talk about annuities, depreciation, and all of this we are expected to know. And finally, on number and numeration, we can talk about variation, in which we have direct variation, partial variations, inverse variation, joint variations, how numbers relate to one another. At the increase in one, we have fed the other. Maybe it will reduce, maybe it will also increase, or it will just remain a constant. That is number and numeration that WAHEC expect that the students attempting this general mathematics paper should know about. Now, Daytooth Academy has a lot of playlists that are featured to handling all of these sections of mathematics that we're highlighting, not only for the ones that we have talked about in the first section of the syllabus, even all of the other sections of the syllabus, we have our playlists that are devoted to handling all these topics. You get to understand the basics of them. You get to see a lot of past questions that have been solved on them. You get to see examination preps 
that are actually showing solutions on how to handle this question that is why we are soliciting that you should go ahead and subscribe to the channel click on the notification icon so that you can have access to all of these videos as we upload them that is our whole effort in building academic excellence in students and as you join us we know that academic excellence will be your portion so let's continue with our video next on the agenda is the algebra process okay now algebra processes will be talking about the formulating expressions when we are giving situations this way waranda we know how to interpret questions so if you have a question let's say a word problem can i formulate a mathematical expression to actually represent that word problem so after doing that i should be able to evaluate this expression we are going to be talking about some simple operations how do we expand brackets how do we carry out factorizations how do we do some binary operations and um, all these linear equations and linear expressions then we'll be talking about the solution of linear equations in one variable then in two variables in which we can have our simultaneous equations in two variables most of the times is x and y that we use as the variable and y x expect that we should know this change of subject of the formula or relation if we have a particular equation relating a number of variables how do we change the equation from one of the variables to another to equate to the other quadratic equation is one interesting part that students one way or the other you just cannot do without this so you need to have a very good grasp of this we'll be talking about the solutions of the quadratic equation by using factorization completing the square then how do you form a quadratic equation if you are given the roots of the equation then the application of the solution of the quadratic equation how do we also use that how do we use all this to solve for our questions now those are some of the things we are expected to know and in line with this we also need to know the graph of linear and quadratic functions a quadratic functions will generally look like a u or an inverted u okay then we are bringing a linear function that will be a straight line look at the word linear a straight line then how do we solve for the two if they are presented together in a question linear inequalities in themselves quadratic equations we are talking about equal to inequalities we are talking about not equal to so we need to talk about something like greater than less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to and not equal to okay now for this you need to know how to represent on the number line we need to know how to plot a graph when we have um linear inequalities in two variables um how do we use the graph to also solve for all of this these are things that yike is expecting us to know now in algebra functions we need to know how we deal with monomial denominators and binomial denominators where the denominators are not going to be undefined if we put them into our equation then we can talk about functions and relations we can talk about mapping one to one one to many and so on and with that we'll talk about our second aspect of the syllabus which is algebra processes next on the line is measuration okay measuration is going to cover quite a whole lot of shapes we want to talk about length and perimeters and the formula that we can use to solve them we can also talk about areas what's the area of a triangle what's the area of a circle the surface area of cubes cuboids and um, prisms cones and fears and then we can talk about volumes of all these shapes also okay we can also include volume of compound shapes compound shapes in which the shape is comprising two or more shapes okay that are fused together to form that particular shape and then next why expect that we should know about plane geometry okay when we're talking about plane geometry we are starting off with angles angle at a point normally add up to 360 we're expected to know that then what is the sum of angles on a line what is the angle that is at right angle we should also know acute obtuse and reflex angles then the intercepts on two parallel lines are supposed to also be at our fingertips in that case we can talk about alternate angles corresponding angles the intercept theorem and so on triangles and polygons are also coming into this then we should know what is the sum of the angles of a triangle we should know what is the sum of the exterior angles of a triangle we need to know the properties of special triangles talk about the isosceles triangle in which two sides are equal the equilateral triangle in which all the three sides are equal and the right angle triangle in which one of the angles 
is 90 degrees. Then we need to know how to use um, symmetry of angles. Then the properties of special quadrilaterals. What are the characteristics of a square, of a rectangle, of a trapezium, of a rhombus? Okay. Then we need to also know polygons. The sum of the angles of a polygon. How do we get that? The formula y x squared. That we should know that. All right. Now, next on that agenda, talking about Measuration. We also need to know some measuration about circles. We need to know about the chord. We need to know about the circle theorems. Okay. Um, angles in the same segment, they are equal. These are some of the theorems that we are supposed to know when it comes to working with circle. And then construction is also brought into this particular topic. How do you bisect an angle? How do you draw a line parallel to another line? How do we construct angle 90, 60, 45? 30 degrees, how do we construct a right angle, how do we construct an um, angle on a straight line, and the applications of these to solve questions that we are asked, how do we construct, with all this, how do we construct a triangle, a quadrilateral, and all of such. Construction is a wonderful topic that I love so much, and we have a playlist that is devoted to that, you can check it out to prepare for your exam. Okay, Lucy is also writing on the matter of construction, how do we get the locus of a particular set of points defined around maybe a given point or a given line, okay? So locus is actually going to come into place if you want to solve those kind of questions, okay? And then very related to what we've been talking about is the coordinate geometry of straight lines. How do we get the equation of a line, y is equal to mx plus C, how do we find the slope? How do we find the length of a line? All this we are expected to know when we are talking about coordinate geometry of straight lines. And then, one of the topics that WIAC always feature again and again, trigonometry, all right? When we are talking about trigonometry, we are talking about the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of an angle, what is popularly regarded to as so katua. Then how do we use tables to get these trigonometric ratios? Then the special angles, we need to know them off end, okay? Then we also want to know, how does the graph of a sine function look like? What does the graph of a cosine function look like? And we want to look at graphs of trigonometric function, okay? Writing on that, we can talk about the angles of elevation and depression. Most of the time, when we're talking about this, it will generate into a right angled triangle in which we can use our normal application of Pythagoras theorem and Sokatua to solve for those type of questions. Bearings and the bearing of a point from another point and the calculation of distances using many times the sine and the cosine rule, but we first need to understand how do we draw a bearing. That's where students make mistakes most of the time. It's always three digits, okay? So how do we construct the bearing so that we can get our diagram? And that's another key thing. You need to know how to get the correct diagram in interpreting the question. And once that is done, then the question will be easy to solve. Then calculus. Now, calculus used to be restricted to further math also, but by and by, it's being integrated into the mathematics exam. So we also need to know at least some introductory calculus. How do we find the differentiation of a function how do we integrate some simple algebraic functions? And then what many students used to run away from statistics and probability. Yeah, in statistics and probability, we'll be talking about, like in statistics, we want to talk about the frequency distribution, pie chart, bar chart, histograms, polygons, okay? We want to know how do we evaluate the mean, the median, and the mode for discrete and grouped data. We need to know for both. Then the wonderful curve that I like so much, the cumulative frequency curve, generally referred to as OGIV. Now, how do we construct the OGIV? How do we know what we need to plot to the horizontal axis, what we need to plot to the vertical axis? How do we also generate further questions? How do we find the interquartile range, the semi-quartile range, the, you know, all of these questions that are associated with OGIV. Then, Measures of dispersion, we need to know the mean deviation, standard deviation, the variance, and co. And then on the probability, we need to know experimental and theoretical probability, what the probability of getting a head when a coin is tossed, what the probability of getting a six when a dice is thrown, okay? Then the addition, 
and multiplication of probabilities for um, independent events and then exclusive and independent events. Now, finally, this is also becoming integrated into the mathematics syllabus. General mathematics is now featuring vectors and transformation, okay? Vectors are actually quantities that have magnitude and direction. So, we're expected to know how do we translate the magnitude and the direction of a vector and bring it into a Cartesian plane and plot the appropriate graph for that. How do we find the magnitude of the vector? How do we do addition, subtraction of vectors and some simple scalar multiplication that is expected of the students in preparing for the YEC exam? Now, transformation is a topic that students generally run away from, but it's one of the things that you can easily lay your hands upon and get your full marks. So we want to see how do you reflect points and shapes in the Cartesian plane. If you have a particular point on the plane, how do you rotate it, maybe clockwise or anticlockwise, or maybe by angle 90 degree or angle 180 degrees on the Cartesian plane. One of our playlists is totally devoted to that. You can check it out so that you can prepare for your exam. And with that, we would have covered all of the topics that Wahek is expecting that each student will know in preparation for the examination. Now, looking at this, now you have a good overview of what the exam is going to entail, okay? And with this, you can actually sit down, look back, okay, my preparation, at least I've covered these particular topics. I'm very good in these particular topics. Okay, I know algebra processes so much, no matter the question that is coming from there, I'll be able to lay my hands on it. But it looks as if vectors that is sounding strange maybe i need to go and study more about that i need to dust one or two things so that i'll be able to prepare well for the exam and um, statistics and probability i don't really like that question but since it's going to come out okay let me also grind in and prepare for it proper planning prevents poor performance and that is why we're advocating that you need to know this you need to if you can print this out Take it with you in your study so that you can map out. Now, this is how I want to study. I want to focus this week on this particular topic or this subtopic so that no matter where the question is coming for me in my exam, I'm going to lay my hands on it and gain that academic excellence. That's our wish for you. That's our desire for you. And we know that with all this preparation, that excellence is going to be your portion. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's Dave Tooth Academy. And until next time, God bless you.